This girl's science project is due today. But she can't find it in her messy locker. That's an F for you. <laughs> Forgot he had practice today. You're late. Five hundred push-ups. <laughs> Laura left a homework to the last minute. Hard for their test today. And Ethan didn't write down the day of his test. Wow, that was terrifying. Good morning, everybody. Today we are going through lesson five in our study skills course. We are halfway through, which is exciting. Um, so today we are looking at organization, one of my favorite topics. I can organize all day long. The execution may be a bit of a problem, but the organization, it's good. Um, so we're going to look at organization today. We're also going to look at another important topic, and that is your study environment. You know, a place to set up for uh, optimum study time. Uh, learning time and we're gonna look at some things that <clears throat> those who are in the know uh, who are good students the the research and what they say excuse me a good study environment should have and must not have so let's jump right in quick review the three cornerstones in uh, being effective uh, in anything in life really, but especially your study skills, is to assess first where you are right now. And we looked at our study habits, we looked at our learning strategies and, and where we fell into that continuum, what our strengths were. Um, so we really just assessed ourselves as a student. Then we decided that um, once you know where you are, where do you want to be? And one thing we learned is that the difference between successful students and really people in life and unsuccessful students is whether or not they have a vision for their future. Uh, those who typically don't set their eyes on the a horizon of a vision or a mission um, tend to just kind of meander. And so that was one key thing we learned is we've got to look ahead and we drew our little quadrant pictures of where we are now where we want to be or think we want to be in five years and in ten years and we started to really look at what our long-term goals or our long-term vision was for our lives so that mission where do I want to be um, that's a very important one, and many people make the mistake to skip that step. Um, and so we looked specifically where we wanted to be um, after we graduate and beyond. <clears throat> we also tried our hand at making our mission statements, and we were going to share those this week, but Hurricane Irma decided to mess up our plans just a little bit. Once you kind of get that mission, um, that overall goal in mind, then you start looking at your priorities, um, your goals under that. Um, the, a goal really is nothing more than priorities or a key areas um, in your life where you're desiring to make change and progress. You create goals. Something you strive hard to achieve with much effort is really what goal setting is all about. It's where you want to go, knowing that 
it's going to take some rolling up our sleeves to get there. And that's true with anything that's worth doing in life. Um, it's, it's a process. And we have to be willing to have a good attitude and the right mindset and know that it's not going to be the easy road, that it's going to take some effort. Um, we're going to re readdress this issue of goal writing. I looked at your homework and we need to go over this lesson again. Um, it was a good first go for most of us, but we were missing some key elements. So I want you to go back into your student workbook, grab it, and um, I want you to turn to page 18 in your student workbook. And let's, let's make some side notes on some of my comments and let's go back through these tips for how to write those objectives. First of all, <clears throat> guys, they've got to be specific. Um, and we'll look here in just a minute about how to do that. But you've got to have a mindset that you're going to narrow that down to a very specific objective. Um, you must have, this is one of the areas that most all of you left off. You've got to have a specific time in which you're going to achieve your objective. If you don't set yourself a deadline, um, it, it's never going to get accomplished. Now, side note, there are some objectives that are continuous, meaning it's every day that's your deadline. You know, it's something you're doing um, for a period of time, maybe the whole academic year. You're doing it from the, right now till the end of the school year. So that has its own built-in time frame. Okay, but other than that, you really need to set a time. The action plans. Uh, many, many of you just put one or two steps and they were just kind of general. Um, an action plan is taking this big objective and breaking it into a systematic step-by-step -step process. So we need to work a little bit more on our action plans. We've got to write this down, which we're doing. But even after this class, I'm, I'm praying that this becomes something that you use all the time. And you need to have a place to write down your goals, your objectives, and your action plans. If it's not on paper, it's like it never existed and it gets gone out of our brain. You also have to look, and we're going to look at this today, you've got to look at your 24-hour time, your weekly time, your monthly time. You've got to look at your time that's already committed and then ask yourself, what price am I going to pay to achieve this objective? Is there some other areas that may have to suffer because this is such a priority? Um, you really got to look at the price in terms of time, and commitment and activity uh, for this for whatever your objective is <clears throat> kind of falls into achievable and um, we'll get there with the SMART acronym we've got to get into a habit of having a morning meeting with ourselves every day or an evening meeting for the next day and think about our goals and objectives or our days can get lost. Um, we can not be able to redeem that time either. So our goals and objectives, they're kind of our map. They're, they're our, our pattern, our focus to get us through every day. So we need to be thinking about them every day. And you've got to make sure that you can measure your success in your objective. If you don't give yourself a yardstick, you're never going to know uh, if you're on the right track. So it's got to be measurable. And many of our objectives that we wrote in our homework really were not measurable. So think SMART, that acronym we've talked about, when you're writing your objective. 
Just review. They've got to be specific. They have to be measurable. They have to be achievable. They have to be realistic. Achievable means that if the difference between achievable and realistic, achievable means that basically they're a goal that allows you to break steps down into an action plan. If you have a goal that doesn't give you the ability to do that, it's not going to be an achievable goal. Um, realistic goal, you know, I'm going to be the president of the United States by January, is not realistic. Um, so we have to really look at our goals and really ask ourselves. A lot of this is kind of an internal look or an introspective look on where we are uh, in terms of some of our strengths and weaknesses and if our objective we're forgiving ourselves a realistic time frame um, etc and time bound of course we've got to make ourselves have a deadline in most instances so they went over an example um, in our book and I wanted to point out a couple of things when you write a goal you're writing the big group is kind of your goal. You're splitting your life up into um, sections. Uh, you have a, a student section in your life or an academic. You have maybe you're a piano player, so you have uh, um, an instrument, uh, a musician section in your life. Um, your religious growth and spiritual growth is another area. Your social and family and leisure time that's a big part of who you are um, and you may have some goals for that part of your life so you're gonna kinda group your life into maybe four or five sections if you will and then under each of those sections is a priority so for under school or academics your priority your goal will fall under English for example so each of our goals need to look something like this. So we're just subgrouping and organizing our life. Once we have decided, okay, I'm looking, I'm thinking about me as a student and I'm really focusing on my English class, then we can look at the aspects of our uh, course in English and what we, what goals or objectives we want to make, what progress we want to see. In this example, they're concerned about their grades and they want to raise their grades from they're giving where they are now an 84 percent to where they want to be a 90 percent uh, making it measurable and they're giving a deadline of December 1st probably because it's the end of the semester so and it also looks like it's a very realistic goal if they had a 50F and they were going to say a 90 and depending on where they are in, in this time frame of making this goal in their class, that might not be a realistic goal at that point. But increasing by 6% is a, is a realistic goal. Then they take and they're looking at their action plan. They have a daily plan. Um, they have uh, an activity within their subgrouping their English class into their literature side of it and what they're going to do to improve. Maybe that's an area of weakness for them. Um, they haven't been assessing themselves and monitoring them, themselves with keeping track of their grades, so that's important. Um, their attendance hasn't been real good in terms of the extra help, so they're going to increase that um, and they're going to get some help they're going to get a study buddy and have them help review their compositions their writing assignments before they turn them in so they've broken down their English class into what activity needs to happen for each section of uh, their class their coursework Uh, so a couple things to review. Um, I know I'm hammering this in, but it's really important. Goals, goal writing 
objective writing, um, it, it really is a skill and it takes practice. Um, so again, the goals have got to be the priority and then the spe specific area under that priority. In terms of, um, let me get a new color here. In terms of objectives, be careful not to use generalities with objectives. Um, make sure you give yourself a time frame for most of your goals. Um, and when possible, it's not always possible, but give specific numbers. Action plans. Again, another area that's it really takes practice to, to just assess and think about what steps you really have to take to get you to where you want to go. Um, give a timeline of these actions. Notice that they went from a day um, point of view down to um, an overall thing that they were going to do. <clears throat> Make sure it's in a logical order. So sometimes you may want to, on scratch paper, kind of jot them out and then number them by priority and then put them into your action plan. Use the time frame stated in this objective to develop that action plan. Use what you've worked so hard on. Okay, so let's I'm going to give you another example. I, I told you I, I do I do the homework too. So I'm gonna kind of review this real quick. Um, this is not what I would call perfect. Um, but there's some things in here I wanna I wanna point out to help. So hopefully that's what it's doing. So let's look at this. Again. This is extremely important. And if you have not tried your hand, like I asked, at creating your mission statement, you really need to do that. Because when you're starting to look at your goals, you need to look back up and make sure that your goals that you are spending your time on are fortifying or blessing or adding to or fitting nicely in to your overall mission statement. Um, we all have, as Christians, our big purpose or mission in life. Um, all of us were created to bring um, joy and pleasure to our Lord. Uh, that's pretty much why we were created. But this mission statement is God also is giving you your own personal um, purpose in life. And so that's what the mission statement is. Um, some, sometimes, well, what's really helpful is to take a um, quiz on your spiritual gifts. By this time in your life, you're starting to see some areas um, of strength. And God's blessed all of us with different lev levels of the spiritual gifts. And some are blessed in more areas than others. And that will guide you into your purpose, uh, your mission in life. One of you already knows that your goal is to be a teacher. So looking at your spiritual gifts, hopefully one of the strengths is a gift of teaching. And so you may want to check that out and then write your mission statement. So my mission statement, I created this one uh, this summer after I took, took a mission statement course from Bible.org. It's, it's a really good um, mini unit from a women's conference. And so this is what my mission statement, this is when I came up. This was my crack at it. Uh, to bring pleasure first and foremost to my Lord by focusing on worshiping and serving Him first. It's really easy to let that quiet time and that go in the busyness of life. So 
I wanted to make that a priority and know that that is my first priority and it is in my mission statement because if I don't have a relationship with my Lord and Savior, I'm really missing the main point of this thing called life. So serving Him and learning to worship and focusing on worshiping Him more, that's my first. And then to focus on those around me. What is my mission? And to show love and honor to people. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness, and there's no pause button. So to use my gift of teaching, as I told you, I did a spiritual gift. Actually, I've done several of those throughout my life. And the gift of teaching has always been, it's always come up to be one of those things he's blessed me with. So it leads me or guides me to what I need to focus on uh, in my life. So use my gift of teaching to create. I'm a creative person, so I put some action verbs in there to create to nurture, and to maintain an environment of growth. What do I want to see? I want to see growth in myself and in others, um, challenge um, in myself and others, and to really tap into that helping ministering to that un unlimited potential that my husband has, that my children uh, anybody that God brings into my life, that I'm helping them in that unlimited potential that they have. So, <clears throat> goal setting. <coughs> I focused on an area in my life of teaching since that consumes the majority of my time. That's And that's where my uh, spiritual, my strongest spiritual gift is. And my sub-priorities are my language arts class, my Latin class, and um, as, as the director, I guess, is the word they use, but basically serving the parents as raised as well and trying to help them make their homeschool peaceful and um, continuing to grow and making homeschool their own homeschools better and better and better. <clears throat> so now let's look at the objectives. My objective from my focusing on my language arts class, um, I want to, to improve in teaching, loving, and supporting my students. Um, that's what he's entrusted me to and I want not just the action of teaching a subject, but the relationship, um, loving them along the way, and providing support, um, maybe not just even in the subject, maybe just as a student as well. So how, by engaging with them more from one time a week at the co-op to four times a week, being able to spend more time with my students. This goal is, I. this is my first year teaching Latin to a group of students instead of just in the homeschool environment where I relied heavily upon the videos from um, our Latin curriculum. So this is a weak area for me <clears throat> um, and I want to strengthen that area. So to become a better Latin teacher for my students and the only way I know to how to do that is to be committed to learning the, the language itself right along with my students. So my goal is to become fluent. They say it only takes two years if you put your mind to it. So to become fluent in Latin in two years. Notice this has a weekly deadline. So it's a continuous goal. You know, every week that becomes the new goal. This goal is um, linear. It's going to take me a set of time, two years. 
And then finally, to minister to and love raised parents with daily, weekly, and monthly communication. So again, this is one of those that's circular. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep rebooting. I'm going to have to keep looking at that from a daily perspective, a weekly perspective, and a monthly perspective. And then you can see um, my action plan. This action plan, basically you can sum it up, is whatever I assign my students, I too am going to do. And I'm going to do it ahead of them. A week ahead of them is my goal, with the exception of watching the lessons. Um, I will preview those lessons again the, the day before you know, those assignments uh, are given out, just so it's fresh in my mind. But I try to, I'm going to try to stay in some instances a week ahead so that when I'm looking at what hiccups they may have or struggles, I can get extra information and help to them. <clears throat> Real quick, it just glance through these. Notice that there's a daily focus here. There's... Um, a resource focus, this is a organizational, whoops, I didn't do the whole thing. There's a organizational component, a tool. This is a tool that I'm using now. I did some research and found what would help me to engage daily uh, with my students when we can't physically meet daily. Um, Spending more time teaching when we're not together. Everybody can watch a video. Everybody can passively listen to a lecture. Not spending that lecture time during our co-op time. So flipping the classroom. And I've been learning a lot about that. <coughs> and then, you know, that love part and support part has um, an action plan that again is going to look at maybe a monthly, uh, daily with work that's being submitted to send encouraging notes uh, in all the modalities I can come up with. Um, emails, maybe a card, a personal card, um, and within my students' work. So you get the idea of, of how you're breaking the, the objective down into a set of actions that are going to help you meet your deadline. So, the goal, it's the area in your life you're focused on. The objective, it's the what. It's the what you want. That's the objective. It's the what. And here's our tool to assess our objectives, the SMART acronym. So we go from the what, great, we've identified or defined it, but now we've got to get to the how. And that is our action plan. So all three of these, you know, are very critical uh, breaking down your life into those three uh, steps. So did, I hope that helps you to understand more about what goal setting is and how important it is. So once you create those goals and you've set that action plan, now how are you going to implement that? How are you going to get there? What tools do you need? You know, just just writing down a plan isn't execution, is it? And we need some tools to be effective, to be successful, to execute these, these action plans and these goals. <clears throat> Time management is a big one, and we talked about that last week. So um, go into your notes on that. Just want to, you know, briefly fly through that um, mini unit. And it's on page 27 in your workbook. So in case you missed any, you've got to be able to make sure you can adjust. So using uh, digital or pencil where it's easy to erase um, is important. It's, you know, everybody has these people who love their planners, paper planners. They have highlighters and pins and unless they're erasable different colored pins um, you're really going to be doing an awful lot of white out because things are going to change 
learning to break those tasks into smaller subtasks and not procrastinate on them is a key, key element. Um, learning to break a problem or a task down into manageable bites um, will serve you beyond your study skills, your student life. Make sure you're realistic about what your body needs. Taking some breaks here and there um, is always good. Allow time before, guys, the evening. Um, I don't care what anybody says. True scientific research says we really spiral down by the end of the day. We get Our brains get tired. Our bodies get tired. And if we're trying to do our school late in the afternoon as a start um, and into the wee hours, we are going, we're not going to be as efficient in mastering that material. We just don't have the go-go juice. So it would be, it would be like starting a trip out in the middle of the desert with just a quarter tank of gas. You're going to get stranded. So please, that's where sleep comes into play. This is an important one. Really, really look, and we're going to look at this today about our time management in a little bit more detail, but really know that we all have the same 24 hours in a day, and we really need to start off in the morning. Be sure you... you um, your schedule is really helping you achieve your goals. If you're spending too much time in leisure activities um, and not enough time in those goals, those uh, school-related or so forth, like piano, if you're not spending any time practicing your pan piano or very little, you know, you're really spinning your wheels on trying to learn to play the piano. And commit. Commitment is key. Once you make this plan, other than doing some dynamic assessment where you need to make some tweaks here and there, overall you've got to commit yourself to your schedule you create and really allow as few interruptions as possible. I'm going to show you how to put time in for life so that when those interruptions come, they're not messing up your, you know, sabotaging your plan. <clears throat> And that goes into this one. Allocate time for those, those life incidences that occur. <coughs> and make sure you understand that those action plans, distributing the work along a time frame instead of cramming it at the last minute, truly is a principle of wisdom. And it's a valuable skill that you need to be committed into learning. So last week you started your weekly schedules um, and blocking your time. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, most of you uh, did a pretty good job. Um, I'm going to show you some effective ways today to develop that into something more um, beneficial to you. So leads us into organization. Our first tool to help us to get to where we want to go is time management. Our second big one is organization. If we're not organized, it zaps our time. Uh, and so it can really sabotage us. It's a key component, key component uh, in any system, any process you're implementing. Because it's really helping you develop a habit. Staying organized gives you a system and a rhythm. And most successful people are very organized people and that is not a bad thing. Um, this is going to be key in every aspect of your life, whether you're in the workforce or as a, um, a parent, um, Anything, learning to be organized is just a critical tool. But for now, we're just going to focus on 
that big chunk of your life, which is your student life and your home life. So turning to page 31, let's take some notes on organization. We're going to break it down into what you must have, what you must use, and what you uh, must do, and what you must not do. Okay? So, you must use a planner. If you're just waking up and floating around um, or allowing somebody else to truly tell you what to do and where to go at this age, you're not learning and practicing the skill of managing your own self. So the key to good organization is to have your brain on paper, if you will, some agenda book, planner, or digital device. Remember that somewhere that you can look at are your goals and objectives in writing. Make sure too that you always have your whoops your supplies. Um, this was something that I ran into being where we lived. Taking a trip to the Office Depot or Office Max, um, I did a pretty poor job and we would run out of paper and that always you know, sabotaged our plans. So make sure you have a little supply list and, and a little checkbox um, that when you're starting to run low on your supplies, that you have a little list to kind of make to check, oh, I need that. Um, good supplies, too, for organization are notebooks, binders, um, divider tabs. We go through them. Um, it's very helpful to have those things to stay organized. And we're going to look at the three main organizational types organizers for school. Um, so if what you're using right now isn't working for you, you might want to look at this. It can, it can be helpful. Another habit for organization is you've got to get into the habit of checklists and to-do lists. They are key. And make sure that you're monitoring, assessing yourself, looking at um, your grades. How are you doing? Um, a lot of our grades at raise is completion grades. So if you're getting a bad grade in a lot of those daily grades, it means that you're not doing the practice. Um, and that that can be a big problem. <coughs> so lack of organization leads to chaos, and nobody wants to live in chaos. So make sure you make time to organize and to reorganize daily and weekly. Make sure you leave your area ready to go for the next day. Here's three main ways people organize. Uh, some people use the big binder system and they split their day based on the noon hour. And they have their morning classes in one mega binder and their afternoon classes in another. This is great in that it's all in one place and the downside to it is that um, it's very cumbersome, and it's really hard to, to use sometimes, uh, at least for some of us. It was for me. And if you look, this is in the back of your book, so you can look at it with me. Um, let's see if I can find it. Page 52 in the back of your appendix has this, and you can see the, the main little steps here about using the mega binder. The second system is the one most of us use. It's the colorator. It's taking notebooks, binders, and color coding them for classes or using the white uh, binder and inserting, you know, a pretty picture or something title for each subject. Um, the color coding system works really good for us visual folk and us kinesthetic folk because um, different colors bring different um, physical responses like warm colors tend to be soothing, bright colors tend to help you with alertness and that's why the majority of notebooks are very colorful. So 
The third one is the collapser. This is the accordion file. Uh, my suggestion is make sure you do, if you're going to do this system, make sure it has a flap or all your papers fall out and it's very frustrating. Um, the positive to this again is that it's all in one place. It's kind of like having your own little filing cabinet. Um, so it can be a good, good way of organizing things. The downside to the accordion file system is again, you can get in a hurry and put papers in the wrong spot. Done it, and it's frustrating. Um, that's a downside to this. Also, with it being that plastic, it's very hard to store. Um, it doesn't always stand upright very well, and it can slide. So you might want to have like a shelf for it where you can lay it flat and slide it in. Transport folders are always good, especially if you're doing this big binder thing. You don't necessarily want to take that out and about. So having a pocket folder system where you have some paper for your notes that you can transfer back into your binder. You have your homework placed in those transport folders, the two pocket folders, um, where, you know, so you put that in there so you can bring it to a co-op. So those are the three systems. Um, and so if your system isn't working for you might, right now, you might want to look back on in that appendix and really study those three ways and, and pick one that you think might work better than what you're doing right now. Okay, that's what you must have. What you must do, write down all your homework in your planner. Now, for us, this is already done for us, woohoo, through uh, Praxy and in some of our classes, the Google, account, the Google Classroom, and the Google Classroom will automatically put your homework due dates into the Google Calendar. Um, and if you have a Gmail account, which most of you do, you have access to the calendar, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. For us, the what, how I would say is since you have this in Praxy and in the Google Classroom, what you want to write down in your book are any of the big assignments and breaking them down. Most of the teachers do a good job of doing that for you or reminding you, um, but you might want to, you need to write those deadlines down. The other thing is what I would do as a homeschool student is anything that didn't get done the day it was supposed to, that's what you're going to write down, not into a to-do list or into your planner um, to remind yourself as a task that you did not get that done. We've talked about that. Tests and quizzes, write them down, write those dates down when you know them. Write down your responsibilities at school and at home in your organization system. If you have daily chores um, and or specific day, day chores, Mondays you do this and Wednesdays you need to do that, you need to write those things down. Incorporate those action steps and objectives. This is key, incorporating them into the schedule or it, if you don't, plan it in your schedule, then this action will never, ever happen. Uh, check your agenda book. Sometimes you write all this stuff down and then you don't look back at it. That's a problem. Um, and realize in organizing, guys, there's a place for everything. Um, and, and get into a good habit of putting things back where they belong or you end up wasting all your time looking for them. And we all know we've all done that. So if you're reading your literature book on the couch, because that's where it's the best place to read a good book, um, then you need to make sure when you're done, you don't just throw the book down, but you put it back into your study zone, right where it belongs. So the next day, you know, you can go right to it and not be spending 15 minutes looking for it. I really want you guys to get into the habit of a study buddy and one is your homeschooling parent this is key 
um, even though you're independent in a lot of your studies, build an accountability system where for each subject, each course you're taking, that daily on average is a 10 minute recap with them, showing them their work, your work, telling them what you learned that day. It helps to master those concepts. Um, and if it can't be achieved every day, then two or three times a week, you may need to spend then more than 10 minutes with them on each. But get into a habit of having your parent as your resource, your accountability, and your, um, your teaching them the concepts. You practice quote unquote teaching them the summary concepts, you are learning them as well. And your study buddy um, in your class, your classmate, technology is here that allows you to have a study buddy even when you cannot meet face to face. You can FaceTime. Uh, you can plan times if your parent will allow where you guys can meet at the library, uh, especially there during those pre-test times in study. Uh, of course, FaceTime can help as well. When you're making your to-do list, you must prioritize the to-do. Make sure you have a system, a color-coded system or a numbered system. This is a priority one. Okay, this two is a priority one. Oh, this is a priority three. Um, or you can use A, B, C, whatever works for you. Summarize, paraphrase, and recite the instructions of any task before you begin. You must do that or you're going to waste your time not following the directions and doing the assignment wrong. What you got to eliminate. Quickly, clutter. Clutter is a killer. Stay in, stay in putting everything in their proper place and getting rid of the clutter. Cleaning up the coffee cups and the water bottles. Um, you got to eliminate the, the mindset of being irresponsible. You're now in the teenage years. This is the time where season of your life where you start to take responsibility for yourself um, and your own actions and outcomes. And it's time to really um, take that seriously and not be frivolous because it only hurts you. So being responsible. It's a good thing. It's not a negative thing. Placing blame on others. You know, this has been around since the garden, right? Um, she didn't, she didn't explain the assignment right. It, she, it was confusing. Um, my brother kept me up all night. My dad, um, was being loud, um, interrupting me, I excuse after excuse after excuse. We've got to get into the habit of eliminating blame on other people. Uh, it goes back into retaking responsibility for ourselves. Uh, this is my big problem, spending too much time, more time than is needed on a task. I do this. I'm so guilty of this. You know, sometimes you don't need the um, master blaster notes. I spend too much time on something that is really necessary. And this takes practice and takes some reflection on oneself. And if you guys have any ideas on how to help me with this, timers I know is, is a good one, is staying committed to a time frame and having timers to, when that timer goes off though, you got to close it up. Um, stigmas about organizational problems. You know, people saying, well, that's just not my personality type. I'm not an organized person. I'm a free spirit. You know, that's really a misnomer. Uh, God created this world, again, not in chaos. Everything has its season. Everything has its rhythm. Everything is very organized. His first thing he said to human, uh, to man, to, to Adam was, I want you to organize my creation by naming them and grouping them. 
So this is really not true. Every personality has and should have an org being uh, organized. Make sure that you don't um, use, again, blame. Well, I'm weak in this area, so I can't achieve. Draw on your strengths. God created us to where we can compensate for the weaknesses we have. So, just to recap, before you begin to study, make sure that you're organized. Make sure that at the end of the day, you're preparing and regrouping for the next day. And make sure that your area of study, your zone, is um, free of distractions, has really good lighting, is comfortable but not too comfortable, um, and be sure you have your materials, everything you need in place. And here's the biggest one. Set your mind to it. Have, have a good attitude. Be, be excited that you get to learn and grow. So before you begin to study, have an attitude check and get your mind to it. You control your attitude. Nobody else does. And it is something that you can control. Make sure you plan for breaks if you're that kind of person that needs little mini bursts of breaks. Really fight the procrastination bug. We all struggle with procrastination. Um, plan and prioritize your work. Plan your work. Do the work. That's the steps. Plan, then do. Plan, then do. Here's one I got to work on. Keep a timer or watch or clock close by to help manage and give you those cues that, okay, time's up, and anything that's not done maybe goes into a homework bin or a to-do later, catch-up uh, bin. And then reward yourself when you achieve those goals. Give yourself whatever it is, you know, a pat on the back, um, extra time to do your artwork, um, a trip to the ice cream shop, whatever. Finally, let's look real quick at our study environment. A study environment is everything that surrounds you when you study. Okay, your lighting, sight, smells, um, where you're sitting, etc. Um, and one we forget about, temperature. If it's too hot, you're going to fall asleep. And if it's too cold, you're going to be chattering and not able to write. So... Kind of a cool cli climate is usually best. <clears throat> Make sure that your study area is where you are the most alert. And you guys may have to rethink your study area. If your bedroom is your relaxation place, yet your desk is in there, you may either have to create a zone in your room that brings you to alertness, maybe in front of a window, um, or you may have to just get out of the bedroom and leave uh, your room to your downtime um, and find another place to set up where you do school. And I know that's tough, uh, but if, if, it's, if that environment is not gearing you up to study um, efficiently, you need to break, you just need to bite the bullet and find another place. It's where you can concentrate the best. Your setting. You create that study zone, that setting. Make sure it's free from uh, unnecessary distractions. Make sure you don't have YouTube videos up that aren't related to, to your academics at the time. Make sure your phone. Guys, if your phone is a distraction and you've got buddies texting you and being silly, um, you're really going to slow down and bog yourself down and end up spending the whole day doing school when it could have taken you half that time. So really eliminate any and all distractions. Do not have the TV on while you're studying. <clears throat> it, it, doesn't, it truly isn't going to do anything but distract. A desk or chair is really suggested. 
Um, again, if you're doing some, some reading, you can ebb and flow into different places, but o overall, you need a, a, good, a good table and a chair. And try to stay consistent about studying in the same place every day. Um, like I said, every day when we, we do literature, we move to the couch. Um, and that's okay. It's the same place. But the rest of the time, we're sitting at a table, and it's the same table. This just really helps you to develop the habit of studying. It, it gets that mindset triggered when you're in the same place every day. Lighting is important if you do not have, if the lighting's too dim, um, it can cause you eye strain. I know some of us that humming noise um, in those fluorescent lights are, are a problem, so make sure your lamp does not have a fluorescent light if that bothers you. But if you're getting headaches, you need to look at your lighting. Again, a quiet place. Some of us, if it's uber quiet, we, we cannot focus, but um, soft music, study music, and you can go to Pandora, uh, even YouTube has, has a study music zone, um, and make sure that it does not have, not have words in the music. Um, without boring you too much, when you're trying to process language or produce language in writing or whatever when you're trying to study and you have another source of words lyrics coming into your brain it it fragmentizes the words and you can't your brain can't group and chunk them um, the way that it can maximally without words so just take my word for it no music with lyrics Use your downtime and your getting ready time to play your, your favorite tunes. Use classical or, or piano. Use that kind of instrumental music to study with. Okay, so last thing for today. Um, you're going to turn to page 55 in the back of your book. Now that we have our action plans and our goals, uh, now that we've looked at our zone to set up, now that we're, we've got everything in place, now we've got to make sure that we block our time correctly. So this 168-hour exercise is a look at a 24-hour a day, 24-hour day, seven-day week. So that gives you 168 hours. This is to really look at <clears throat> what flexibility time you have left. So your first step is to look at your academics, since that is the biggest part of your life right now. Take your co-op class hours, the time you spend at co-op, tally them up, and place them here. Then your study hours are your homeschool, at-home hours, and you're going to list your courses and then you're going to list the grades you want to get and then the approximate amount of time you think it's going to take you in a week okay so you have to get your calculator here this is a week alright so if you do math on average an hour a day five days a week then it's five hours for that week okay and so forth and so on uh, National Statistics did some looking up. Middle school average hours per week of both their academic time and their homework time. Most middle school students spend 30 to 35 hours a week on their school. Most high school students spend 40 to 50. So you should be somewhere in that ballpark. If not, you really need to think about, uh, especially if your grades aren't where you want them to be, or you're not, and my, what's more important to me is, am I mastering the concepts? Can I retain the information? If you're not really retaining anything, you need to look at your time that you've allowed in your schedule 
and see if it matches the average and maybe you need to increase it. Once you have those averages uh, that you're going to spend per week, then you add them up and you put them here at the bottom. Next, you're going to look at fixed activity time. This is the time in a week that everybody has to spend doing this, these fixed activities. Everybody has to take care of themselves and groom and dress, and they've put the averages in there. On average, it's 7 to 10 hours a week of personal care time. Meals, 10 to 12. Notice sleep is a little under the 9 and a quarter, um, but it's on average 50 to 60 hours per week. Okay, And then anything else you need to add in. So you put yours in here, and then you tally those up. Then you're going to take both those numbers and you're going to put the total committed hours you now have and that you have to block into your schedule. Bring it down here and subtract it from the total hours you have in a week and this is going to tell you your flex hours that you can build in. So our scenario here, I took the high end of all these numbers. So I did the 50 hour week for school. I did um, all the top numbers here for the average, and that gave me 92. I tallied them up to my total committed hours of 142, subtracted it from 168, and I still have 26 hours a week of flexible, down, of flexible time, which gives you about 3.7 hours of flexibility per day. So do this before we look at um, Monday. We're going to look at some ways to block this into, uh, I'm going to use the example of the Google Calendar. I think it's a really good resource uh, that fits our mod modern times, and I'm going to teach you how to do it. Um, and even if you don't use it, some of the things I'm going to show you, you can adapt to another system. So make sure you do page 55 um, before you go into Monday's study skills class. All right, um, that's the end. So I hope this was helpful. We'll now have it recorded where if you need to scroll through and look at a couple of the slides, you certainly can. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, your weekend. Talk to you guys later.